Hi. Here you go. Today we have choice, and choice is good. Choice keeps the market moving forward. Choice keeps prices down, in theory. Choice forces progress. Choice brings variety. Choice is pretty choice, if you ask me. AMD has just been about a step behind NVIDIA for the last few GPU launches, ever since RDNA took over from the GCN architecture and we got the 5700 XT in 2019. The 5700 XT was fine. It stood up against the RTX 2070 in a fair fight, but never really pushed boundaries. The 6800 XT and 6900 XT came next, and in rasterization performance, we saw them go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the RTX 3080, no small feat. And now we have RDNA 3, and these two units right here, the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX. As you may have glimpsed in the intro, AMD is now not only in the fight, they may be beating NVIDIA at their own game. This video is gonna be pretty data heavy, so I'm going to chapterize it for you in case you want to skip to anything in particular. It also took quite a long time to put together, so if you appreciate this kind of thing and maybe you wanna see more of it, please toss a like down below. Let's not waste any more of your time. Here is a quick spec rundown of the new AMD graphics cards that we're talking about today. One of the more interesting things to investigate this time around is the fact that we have two products that, while similarly named, really do perform in different classes. I think this is going to be important to recognize for consumers because the price difference is only $100, and ultimately the $1,000 XTX might just end up being a better deal than the $900 XT. Now I say that knowing full well that $100 is still a lot of money, but if you're talking about a $200 product, a $100 difference is a chasm. But when you start talking about items in the neighborhood of $1,000, a difference of 100 bucks is far less of a hurdle to clear, and you're likely targeting the same audience with both products. I doubt that somebody would consider buying a $900-7900 XT, but think that the $1,000-7900 XTX is just too far outside of their budget. Consumers likely should just go for the more expensive card, as it is far and away the better value. Now, when we're talking value, we have to look at other competing products to see what they're offering, as well as how much they are actually going to cost you in the real world. Here's a chart that took me a little bit by surprise. As of the writing of this video, these are the current lowest retail prices for all GPUs in this comparison. I sourced these from major retailers such as Amazon, Newegg, and Micro Center. You'll notice something odd going on, as the 6950XT is currently cheaper than the objectively worse 6800XT, and the RTX 4080 is cheaper than the RTX 3090 and 3090Ti. This is likely due to dwindling stock. However, it creates quite the weird scaling effect when it comes down to frames per dollar spent. Let's take the 6800 XT and establish it as our baseline for both price and performance, as it is the lowest performing card here and also should retail for the cheapest. This is how price scaling works out with the 7900 XT and 7900 XTX both seeing reasonable generational price increases, especially for what we assume will be flagship class products. Next, we can take a look at power draw. And although I was surprised to see that the massive RTX 4080 pulled less wattage than both of the RDNA 3 cards, we don't break 350 watts for either of them, meaning that you can likely get away with a reasonable 750 watt power supply in most situations. This chart does support AMD's revised power draw numbers, as they had increased their projection to 355 watts for the XTX just in the past week. So how fast do the clocks run? Pretty fast, actually, although you might see different clock speed numbers being reported by different software as AMD seeks to be as power efficient as possible, 
These are the average game clocks that I observed during a 10 minute Cyberpunk 2077 playthrough. Peaks were over 2700 megahertz, meaning that we will likely see some really interesting overclocking with both of these cards and RDNA 3 in general. Now, the benchmarks. I stuck with the same testing setup that I've been using for the past few months here just to keep things consistent. Although I did have to retest some of the cards due to new drivers and or data that looked just a little bit out of whack. All in all, I tested nine graphics cards in nine different games with six of those games also being tested with ray tracing features on versus off. All tests are run three times for validation and I kept the resolution at 4K. This will put maximum load onto the GPUs, and to be honest, I think the 7900 series is targeted at 4K gaming anyway, so we might as well test it. The first round of results here are all run with no ray tracing features enabled, so this is just pure raster performance. Cyberpunk 2077 is up first, a punishing test for any GPU, and what a way to kick things off. Both 7900 cards beat out the RTX 4080 with the XTX ending up equidistant from the 4080 and the 4090, a very strong place to be. Keep in mind that even with RT off, the Ultra preset is incredibly difficult to run. Assassin's Creed Valhalla saw another strong showing from Team Red, although the 4080 did take back a place and finished third. The XTX broke 100 FPS here, a substantial increase over the prior generation flagship, the 6950 XT. We see the same exact order play out in Borderlands 3 with the 4090 at the top of the charts followed by the 7900 XTX, RTX 4080, and then 7900 XT. Again, we see the XTX topping 100 FPS in 4K and ultra settings. Seeing as the new AMD GPUs are supposed to compete directly with the 4080 while costing two or $300 less, they are putting in some serious work so far. F122 keeps the same order at the top of the chart, although we see minor shuffling at the low end with the 6950 XT bumping up a spot. This is a gorgeous game at 4K Ultra, and to be fair, most of these cards handled it very well. Still, 148 and 166 FPS here is a great result, and I hope it translates when we turn on ray tracing. Dirt 5 was an AMD sponsored title when it was released, but driver updates over the past year have definitely leveled the playing field pretty well. We see a familiar sight with the 7900 series cards flanking the RTX 4080, and at 125 FPS for the XT, I think with a little performance tweaking, it's likely we could match the 4080's 132 FPS if we really wanted to. Far Cry 6 continues the story of strong rasterization performance, as even the mighty RTX 4090 doesn't pull too far away from the 7900 XTX in this test. This chart is very pleasing to look at as we see a nice linear progression from the bottom to the top. The 6800 XT consistently does finish in last place during these tests as expected. Guardians of the Galaxy is the first time we see AMD slipping. Whether it's from poor driver optimization or just some unusual rendering process, Nvidia has a clear win here. Both the 4080 and the 3090 Ti beat out the 7900 XTX, and the 3090 even trumps the 7900 XT. This seems to be more of an outlier than anything else, but keep in mind that performance isn't always consistent across all games and all tests. Metro Exodus sees another shift in the order as the RDNA 2 cards fall to the bottom while the RTX 4080 and 4090 sit at the top. The 7900 XTX does put up an admirable fight here at 100 FPS, but still falls short of its direct rival. The XT ties the 3090 Ti at 87 frames per second, a fine result, but a little off the pace. And finally, we have Red Dead Redemption 2, as the 7900 XTX returns to its customary second place position on our charts. It beats out the RTX 4080 by a solid seven frames, but notice the gap between the XT and the XTX. That's an 18% jump in performance for cards that are supposed to be fairly similar. We can filter all of that data into a comparison chart, and as we did with the pricing data, this one uses the 6800 XT as a baseline, being assigned a score of 100. Each result represents the percentage of the 6800 XT's performance that you can expect with that particular GPU. So for instance, the RTX 3080 is 8% faster than the 6800 XT. We can see that the 7900 XT performs on average 32% faster than the 6800 XT, but the 7900 XTX is on average 49% faster. 
While I would say 32% is a good and acceptable result, 49% is massive. The 7900 XTX was fairly consistently the second best card in my testing next to the 4090, which right now retails for more than twice as much. Here's a new twist on some of this data. I plotted each card's relative price in green versus its relative performance in red. What you want to see here is the red bar being higher than the green bar, indicating that relative to the 6800 XT, the graphics card performs better than its price would indicate. Note that the only three positions on this chart where we see the red line being higher than the green line is for the 6950 XT, the 7900 XT, and the 7900 XTX. Okay, that was an onslaught of analysis and data, but we're certainly not done as we have ray tracing to talk about. A couple of years ago, I wouldn't think to put as much emphasis on this portion of the video, but Basically, all new games are releasing with at least some amount of RT functionality baked into the settings menu, and it's becoming increasingly important to be able to activate them and play the games as they were meant to be played. AMD has been significantly behind in this aspect since day one. Let's see if the new second gen RT cores can put in some work. We'll first circle back to Cyberpunk to see, well, we kind of see a massacre here. While even the 4090 can't play this game very well at this preset, we're looking more at the comparison than the actual numbers, and AMD is bringing up the rear with every one of their products. Even the RTX 3080 outperforms the 7900 XTX in this test. Let's hope things improve. F122 does thankfully provide some significant hope as the 7900 XT beats out the 3090 and the 7900 XTX gets shockingly close to the RTX 4080. I think we'll pretty much ignore the 6800 and 6950 from here on as they aren't built to compete in this arena. Far Cry 6 was actually really good for the 7000 series. As with the rasterization test, we see the 7900 cards on either side of the RTX 4080 and both of them provide a very playable frame rate with the game settings essentially maxed out. But then we return to the scene of AMD's greatest failure, Guardians of the Galaxy. Just like with our raster testing, the AMD cards just don't like this game. All of them fall well off from even the RTX 3080, and in addition to low average frame rates, the game was heavily stuttering and hitching. Moral of the story, if you play Guardians, buy Nvidia. Metro Exodus is next, and again, not so great. Although the 7900 XTX almost cracks 60, even the last gen Nvidia products are challenging or beating it, and the new Ada Lovelace 4000 series is in another league. And finally for RT testing, we have Dirt 5. All GPUs here top 60 FPS in average frame rate, with the 7900 XTX barely edging out the RTX 4080 to come in second to the 4090. This is a solid result overall, and it does show that AMD is making strides. Again, I've taken our data, averaged it, and compared it to a baseline in order to establish relative performance. This graph tells two completely different tales depending on how you look at it. On one hand, AMD has clearly put in some work on the ray tracing front. The second gen RT cores in the 7000 series provide significant generational improvements of 39% and 58% over the 6800 XT. The other side of that coin, however, is that AMD is pretty consistently at least one generation behind NVIDIA when it comes to this tech. The 7900 XT was on average the equal of the RTX 3080, and the 7900 XTX was on average slightly slower than the 3090 Ti. That's not really a great place to find yourself in the market if you want your audience to be playing with all of the bells and whistles turned on. But let's look on the bright side with our price versus performance chart. We again see that both the 7900 XT and 7900 XTX outperform projections based on price differential, although several Nvidia cards do as well. Although AMD could be doing better here, progress is good, and I hope that they continue to work on it for future releases. Ultimately, the 7900 XT and 7900 XTX look like winners to me. AMD set out to compete with the RTX 4080, and I think they have certainly achieved that goal. The 7900 XTX is about 4.2% faster in rasterization than the 4080, while being 17% cheaper in MSRP. The RTX 
The XT provides 92% of the performance of the 4080 at 75% of the cost. Yes, ray tracing is still an issue, and I think buying decisions may very well come down to which titles you like to play. Are you a competitive gamer who needs high frame rates without needing to turn on every setting? AMD might be the way to go with this price tier, at least for now. Are you deep into immersive single player experiences and want to explore perfectly rendered and realistically lit worlds? Well, maybe you want the RT capabilities of the 4080, even at the higher cost. Again though, as I said earlier, I think the 7900 XTX is just the better overall product versus the XT. It has more memory and is 13% faster in rasterization and 14% faster in ray tracing. And both cards fall into the same general price category. For my money, I'm picking the XTX every time. They both, however, are cheaper than the RTX 4080. And I think that might force some price realignments for the future. It will be interesting to see what happens with the delayed and likely renamed RTX 4080 12 gig, which was supposed to launch at the same MSRP as the 7900 XT of $900. If as expected, it is an inferior performer to the RTX 4080 16 gig, it might find itself struggling to even stay close to the 7900 cards at the same price. We haven't explored the encoding or hardware accelerating capabilities of these cards, in this video as that's just too much to get into for now. But I will be giving myself a challenge right after CES. I'm gonna be switching to an all AMD system for a month and doing a long-term test to report back to you how the Ryzen 7950X and Radeon 7900 XTX do in things like OBS and Adobe Suite. If you wanna make sure you don't miss it, consider getting subscribed by hitting that little red button down below. That is all for this review video, guys. I hope, to be honest, that I don't have to do this again until at least next year. This has been a lot of benchmarking, but I hope these results were helpful for you guys, and I guess I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, take care.